welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Life After Plus One. I'm Leanne, your podcast host and your single parent mentor and coach. And today we are talking to Lisa from Connect Social, who does your dating events, which are great for everyone that's trying to avoid the apps. Everyone's sick of the apps at the moment. So we're chatting to Lisa today to talk about different options in how we meet people away from the app. So Lisa, it's over to you. Introduce yourself and tell us about yourself and Connect Social. Hi there. So I'm Lisa. I own and run Connect Social. Um, started just over two years ago. There's been about, well, actually, there's been over 200 events now that have been happening in that time. Wow. Um, more than 1,200 people have gone through the doors of Connect Social. That's excellent. Not actual doors because it's never at the same place, but <laughs> you get the gist. There's, we get um, it. Yeah, lots of lots of connection has been happening and relationships have been formed and friendships have been formed and it's just been a really cool adventure that love that has been love that so what inspired you to start this uh essentially it was a case of living on the central coast and there was nothing like it around for in-person meetups as far as directly i guess targeted at single people um there was speed dating in newcastle there was speed dating in sydney but nothing on the central coast. Yeah. Um, and that's where, like, I actually sat on the idea for about two years of doing something after oh, wow. heading to Newcastle to some events and seeing what they were like. And I was like, you know, this should be on the coast. And I came back and was telling my function friends and event friends that, you know, you need to do something like this for single people, blah, blah, blah. And they were always like, no, Lisa, you need to do this. And then I was like, I don't have time. Okay. I'm not a business person. I don't, I wouldn't even know the first, you know, the first place to begin with and anything like this, nah. And then um, it was funny. I actually injured myself and was off work and all of a sudden had all of this time and it was just how it, it's just, it's kind it's of like, a, it causes me like to get a little bit emotional because it's like from all of this like bad stuff that happened this amazing thing was able to be created and it was just the joys of hindsight and being able to look back and kind of go, oh, that's why that all happened like it did. So the, well, they the, always say the, the good things come from the rock bottoms. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> was that turning the positives into negatives? Or yes. No, sorry. <laughs> the other turn way the around. <laughs> turn the, <laughs> turn the turn negative into a positive. positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's and that's essentially what's what's happened. It's been um, really cool. Now, how are you finding this with single parents? Because I know for those of you that are listening, I have attended a few of these events myself. And to be honest with you, I shit myself. The first time I yeah. went to, I don't get nervous very often. I'm usually pretty confident. Yeah. But the first time I turned up to one of these events, I tried to talk myself out of going. I oh, was, absolutely. I was so nervous. So what advice do you have for people that are in that situation that aren't as confident as me that are like, hell no, I'm not going to just get out of my comfort zone and do something like this. You know, and this is this is actually a conversation that has come up a lot over the past two years. Like I've had people that have been following from the very beginning of doing this and they've been, you know, they've said to me at their very first event, they're like, you know, I've been wanting to come to this since you started and I haven't been brave enough. I haven't, oh. you know, just been, I've just been like trying and trying and trying and I haven't been able to get myself out of this comfort zone. And so like I'm a massive fan of supporting and I'm doing it today by doing this getting uncomfortable, um, doing different things. It's just, it's pushing through your own boundaries because essentially we are the ones that hold ourselves back. Um, yep. You know, if you, it's, it's, you, there's so many quotes and memes out there about growth and, you know, it comes from if you want something different, you've got to do something different. Exactly. If internet dating's not working for you, which some people get lucky on there, it, it can work. I do see it working. However, I feel like majority of people, it just kind of isn't working and there are alternatives and I'm trying to build that, that I guess, capacity to be able to provide all sorts of different fun events yep. for people that are interested in different things. So back to your original question on feeling the nerves and things like that, I think you've just got to, I think 
well, you you could actually tell. What made you actually follow through and show up? Like what? Well, what was for starters, it? you're a friend of mine, and I didn't want to let you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that helps. Look, I'll be everyone's friend. That helps so you made me accountable. But um, I you're think welcome. it was the idea of I it was my kid free weekends, and yeah. for those of you again who are listening, most of the events, the bigger the bigger events, are held on weekends that I have my daughter because we co-parent <laughs> on different weekends. weekends. So yeah. this one fell on one of my kid free weekends, and I'm like, well, let's just do it. But it happened to be one of those cold nights. It started raining. I'm like, what am I doing? I should just stay home and watch Netflix. But then, <laughs> I don't know, I think I just said, no, no, I've paid. I'm just, I'm going to stick with it. And then you I just committed in. that when you walk in there, especially for the speed dating, because it's quite intimidating at the start, Yeah, you've got to realise that everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's thinking oh. the same thing. Oh. You're not out there on your own. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And that's, and that's one of the things. So, like, I'll do an email reminder and it's just, like I can hold so much compassion. I find myself holding so much compassion for other people's situations. But when it comes to myself, I often just be like, you know, don't worry about it. You, you'll be fine. Stop being stupid. But it's like if someone else is telling me they're feeling that way. It's like, oh, you know, you'll be okay and it's all encouraging. And so it's being able to, like in these reminder emails, it's a case of reminding people to not come with any expectations. Yeah. Just being a night out, coming with an open mind. You know, you never know who could be there. It could be a person. It could be new friends. It could be no one. But essentially you've enjoyed a couple of hours of your time. You've enjoyed a meal. You've enjoyed a drink. And you've had some conversations. And you've got yourself out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And in saying that, yeah. I have kept in contact with a few people that I've met from these events. Yeah. Mind you, they're not yeah. men. But they are ladies. <laughs> it's been nice. I've had a lot, of, made a lot of friendships from these groups. Yeah. And do you know what? That's, that's the thing as well. It's actually, you know, as much as... I guess with speed dating specifically, not so much the other events, but speed dating is about connecting, obviously. You're looking to date. You're putting yourself in a situation to date someone yep. else. Um, but the amounts of friendships that have been formed can be just as valuable. It's like, oh, I found 100%. my tribe of people. like, And they're people that are going through similar things. You're meeting yep. other people that are also single, potentially single parents, potentially going through, you know, the the. Divorce. Corrals, or, yeah, but the journey of their singling life, whether that's with kids, whether that's without kids, but we've all got, you know, you get to certain ages, I guess, in a way, or even not even an age thing. It's not an age thing, but experiences things where, you know, people have been hurt or people have been through trauma. There's all of yep. this stuff, but you're meeting people that are getting it. Like, yeah, I know the um. Yeah, like back when like when I first became single, I didn't have any single friends at all. Yeah. And it was a case of like, you know, every second weekend all of a sudden I had nothing to do because my kids weren't here and it was like, oh, I kind of don't want to sit around the house feeling sorry for myself. I, I want to go on adventures. I want to go and do something and yep. I just I feel that. that void in a little way. <laughs> but until until I made single friends, which so I made I made single friends through netball. I joined a netball club. I played netball. I met people at the gym. You know, there's all of these ways that I was meeting people, and I'm like, you know what? Not everyone's like me. Like, not everyone can really easily put themselves in situations and yeah. and make friends. And I'm like, that's again where I guess the intention of connect was in connecting people that are in similar situations, yeah, with similar interests. Yeah. So that's that's that part. So back. Oh, that's right. Back to the email. That I send out and it's about saying that you know everyone else is feeling the same way as you feeling yeah and that's okay and so when you do like when everyone is first arriving it can be a little bit awkward I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna sit here and say oh it's not awkward and yeah, I it's you piece of cake. That. <laughs> you know what so it is that first part where like you know I'm signing people in I'm giving out name tags you're it's getting very intimidating other people to talk to but once everyone's arrived and I do do like the icebreaker games Yep. which are really a really fun way to just literally break the ice. Yeah. You know, you kind of, I'll make it like, I make it funny. I make people laugh. I feel like people can relax a bit more if there's humor involved. And so in me just being my usual goofy self, it tends to be able to like relax a room and it's really, yeah, I put, I put, I do, I put so much of myself into connect that yeah, you do. That's what people people are coming for as well is that they know that I've kind of got them as their 
growing. Comfort, yeah. You know? Yeah. I remember I was at one of the speed dating events because I've been to a couple and there was one lady there. She was so nervous. She didn't want to yeah. say. Yeah. Does that happen a lot? No. Okay. No. So she was Essentially, it, it, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, no, no one's ever left or anything like that. Yeah. But there, there have been situations and, like, especially at the beginning, like I'm, I was new to this. I'd never ran events before. Like I'd been – you know, I guess I'd been involved in events as far as like bartending or, you know, waitressing and that sort of thing. But the actual host part, it was, yep. oh, it's really got me out of my comfort zones. Um, and so it's just being able to work on the fly. Yeah. Touching base. Yeah, for those them, listening, she did you know. stay. She ended up staying. We had a good chat. I think you had a chat and I had a little chat with her. And she ended up <laughs> staying and enjoying herself, didn't she? <laughs> Because she she sat she sat with it though, yeah, and pushed through. You know, yep. like I get I get people that have literally messaged me from the car park saying I can't come in. Yeah, wow. So their their angst and their anxiety just got too much for them, and yeah. so you know, especially for not so much other events, but speed dating, especially, yes. it's a case of you know I've got equal numbers of men and women, and you know it's worked it's gonna work when everyone gets there, but then if everyone's not showing up. It's just working on the fly and being able to adapt to that. Like I had an event where there was eight ladies and eight men booked in and eight ladies showed up and only four men. <laughs> so it was just... Is that the one that I went to actually? I feel like possibly, yeah. I think it was. It could have been. It could have been. But then it was just a case of, do you know what? The, um, you know, and I, especially at the start, I would take that on board personally, but now it's just a case of going, it's out of my control. I can't control other people. I can't. You know, as far as there's accountability with buying a ticket, that's that's not refundable. If you don't show up, you you can't get your money back. Like, yeah. you know, food's been catered for, everything's been sorted, your name's on a name tag, like, you know, everything's been catered for. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in, in that situation it was a case of, okay, so we've got now four ladies, um, sorry, eight ladies, four men, and so the ladies just chatted with, with each other as the men went around yes. and spoke to everyone. Yes, I think that and, was. You know, I chatted to two yes. of the girls, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a case of where you are expanding those those friendship networks yes. and that's, like I said, just as valuable, if not more so, and I than the than relationship. Exactly, and that's what a lot of people need to remember. These events aren't about just finding your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your future husband or whatever. It's about no. meeting people. Yeah, it's connecting socially. Yes, exactly. Is exactly, exactly the name of it. And so that's, it's just, yeah. Like I said, my, my favourite parts are like hearing stories of people, like I'll be at a separate event completely and I'll, you know, someone will find out what I do and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, I have friends that met because of you. And it's like, woo, yay. Like I was in an event a couple of weeks ago wow. and it was, there was actually two different people that came up to me and said that they know, knew of two couples that actually met. Oh, I love that. Because of yeah. And so it's like, you know, when you hear that and there's like there's been a wedding and there's been like, you know, people are moving in together and lots of lots of relationships have been started. Um, you know, essentially it's a case of like I know none of it's in my power. It's down to each person. So I can connect people. Yep. But it's up to each person to continue to that continue connection. It. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, where that goes from after they, they meet, like that's, you know, that's up to them. That's yep. that's their move. Um, so sometimes you get people that have, have connected and they've been together for like a year, but then they're all of a sudden single again. And so they'll, they'll come back into the loop because they know it works. Like they've yep. experienced it working. Um, but I have like... The, the other side of it, as far as not being just relationships, you've got, like, men that are newly single and, you know, potentially have lost all of their, I know, um, like I said, when I became single and I had no single friends, it wasn't a case of losing friends. It was just a case of having to create new friendships because the old friendships didn't work as much anymore because, you know, everyone was all married. Everyone was doing couple stuff, you know, and that can that can feel really third wheelie and fifth yep. wheelie and seventh really and not you know you get the gist but so the, the the some of these guys have come in and and just been on their own and they've all of a sudden built these really cool friendships and you know some of there's like these three in particular that i think of and they go mountain bike riding and they go oh really 
And they like, yeah. And so like, I'll be like, oh, you guys don't even need me anymore. And they're like, Lisa, we're still single. <laughs> so we're still, we'll still come to events because we still are single. But they've also, you know, they've, they've created their own bromances in a way. They're like, you know, let's go to the pub or let's go. That's so cool. Lunch or, I love that. Yeah. And I speak so a lot really, about that on my podcast, about finding your people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's invaluable. Having having people that see you and understand you and hear you, it's just what everyone needs. You need yeah. you need a tribe. You need 100%. a tribe of people. A hundred percent. Yeah. Now, you've spoken a lot about the speed dating, which is the scary part. What are the other <laughs> options there that people can do if they are really intimidated about walking to them? Because there is a bit of pressure there when you walk into speed dating, like you're expected to match up with someone. Oh, well, and that's, that's, I'm going to break, so break that down to two questions. What advice do you have for okay. people that don't match up with someone? And what are right. the other options of, that you have available? Okay. So the first question, the no matches thing. So I know when, when I was going speed dating and things like that, it was the case of, you know, I was really particular with who I was picking. And so I may have picked one person. And so it's, it's actually, I like what I do um, based on my past experiences with not what I do, if that makes sense. Um, so I only ticked one person and I never heard anything. And I was like, oh, you know, so you're sitting around waiting for a text and nothing yep. came. And so when I set this up, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that to people because I didn't like it. And so I will still message people if they don't get any matches. So the next day, or the, depending on what my schedule is like, generally the next day I'm messaging everyone that came to the event checking in, you know, seeing if they had a good time, asking them to leave feedback and letting them know if they did or didn't get any matches. And so in not getting any matches, I feel like there's no in-person rejection. It's not like when you go to a nightclub or you go out somewhere and you go and approach someone and they're like, no. There's never any of that because everyone's putting their, their best selves out there. Everyone's really nice. Like you, I feel like we can create stories in our head that, you know, people are mean. And... Generally, generally, people are not mean, especially when you're first meeting them. Yeah. That's, you know, everyone, we, we're naturally designed to want to be liked. That's just how humans yeah. are, you know. And like I said, yeah, so initially you know, there's no in-person rejection. No one's seeing anything like that. You're getting a text the next day of, you know, some people will tick everyone. And yeah, may yeah. or may not get any matches. Some people will just tick one person. If that other person didn't tick on them, then it's not a match. You know, yeah. so it does. Some people are ticking two or three people. So it's a case of, like I said, no in-person rejection happens at events. No one's ever gone, oh, I'm not sitting with that person. Yeah. That's mean. No one's actually like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so it is, like I said, it is beneficial. The, But, yeah. In the text that I do send, though, it's just a reminder that, you know, it's not to get disheartened. It just means that your person wasn't there and yeah. that's okay. You know, you still, I try to I try to make people or advise people to look at things in a positive way instead of a negative way. Like you could sit here and be like, oh, it's such a waste of my time and I got no matches and, nah, you know, all this yeah. stuff. <laughs> or, or you could sit with it and be like, Actually, I had a. It was kind of fun. I didn't sit at home watching Netflix all night. Yep. I, sp I enjoyed the food. The food was delicious. The company, you know, it was nice to talk to someone. Exactly. So the amount of people that are like, "Oh wow!" And guess what? You grew as a person. Yep. You pushed yourself you out of your, of your comfort zone. zone. You did something different. Congratulations! Like that's that's really huge and empowering. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that's. That's that. I think you need to also question. remember as well, you're not going to be everyone's match and that's okay. Oh, you're not you don't supposed need to, to be everyone's match. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You know, I often, I often have to, like, sit with this myself and I'm like, I don't want to be for everyone anyway. No. Can imagine, imagine if, no, no, thank you. It will take, like, you know, I'm not going to lower my standards in order to match with Must everyone. Ew. Yep. Ew. Because that's like an e that's looking for an ego stroke. If yeah. I wanted an ego stroke, I'd go internet dating. You know, as a woman, go and get your ego stroked. Get heaps yep. of matches on, on Tinder. Yep. Nothing comes from that, but, you know, still, stroke that ego. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <But that's> <laughs> <laughs>
but got off topic there. Um, anyhow, what was the second part of that question? So what oh, are yeah. the other options you yeah, have? People want to try it, but they find yeah. speed dating way too intimidating. Is there anything else they can do? Yes, absolutely. So there's there's so many fun ways. Like I'm actually, I've created all the stuff that I personally like doing <laughs> and made events into them. And that so makes like, it fun. It does. It does because it's they they are fun. So there's been like singles yoga that's happening regularly, like every three weeks or so. Um, just Sunday morning, do a yoga class, go have brunch with the people that were there afterwards. Nice. It's like it's actually one of my really favorite events because um, I love yoga and it's really nice to connect with people that also love yoga. Yep. Um, then there's like there's been singles barefoot bowls. That's like a monthly monthly type thing just on a sunday sunday session a sunday afternoon have afternoon tea some friendly competition with some barefoot bowls there's been 10 pin bowling putt putt single salsa um beginner salsa lessons uh mental blank single mingle nights where like you know i'll hire a, a function room and hire entertainment so whether it's a dj of dancing mixed with games and connection like intentionally connecting as many people as possible um there's single mingle night single single mixer nights where it's just a case of you know there's some food we're going to just mingle over it again do the games the icebreaker games um connecting yeah people take it upon themselves if they want to exchange details it's kind of a, a lot it's a lot more relaxed than speed dating um and the cocktail nights did you mention that one? Oh no so yeah like cocktail i've done one of them there's I'm actually, I'm actually really excited about announcing <clears throat> there's going to be a wine tasting day coming up as well. Ooh. This is like, oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Um, there'll be more paintball. There's just, like I said, it's just a case of creating opportunities for people that are interested in the same kind of stuff to meet other people. There's been like singles race days. I forgot about that. That's like, there's been a few of them actually where we'll um, have a group of single people just meeting at the races and enjoying a day at the races and who doesn't love a good dress up night? Exactly. There's been like eighties, eighties and nineties single mingle nights, Halloween nights, Christmas in July. There's just so there's the options are endless, pretty much. You're not just committed yeah. to speed dating. I'm definitely not committed to yep. speed dating, and actually, in a way, I'm also look. This is a new thing too. So you're welcome for the <clears throat> insight. <laughs> is that I'm actually looking at growing connect and it not just being for singles as well. So creating opportunities for people that are moving to a new area and yeah, wow. I love that. make new friends and you know so it's just literally connecting socially because who said connect social had to be a singles thing it's not we as again as humans we're designed to connect with people we are supposed to be creating relationships we're not we're not designed for isolation and being alone that's not how we're no. made no. Um, some people prefer that. However, you know, the, the benefit of interaction, whether it's just with one other person or whether it's as a, a group, like obviously some people are naturally more introverted or extroverted just with their personality types. But, yeah, that's, that's that. Another thing I was going to ask, which I just thought of when you were talking, is before I even met you and before I even went to any of the events, I saw yes. your car driving around and I saw, <laughs> see a few of the the events pop up on Facebook and I'd yeah. message a few friends. I'm like, Hey, do you want to go? And they're like, no way. I might see someone I know. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? How do you deal with that? There's a, there's a few things actually. So there's like a negative stigma yes. around being single. And yes. I've had people say, so there's this, can we like, I want to make sure I answer this question, but then I'm like going into the negative stigma of being single and attending a singles event. And, that's kind of a bit lame, don't you think? And I'm like, actually, do you know what's lame? Doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Yep. That's Sitting lame. at home every weekend. <laughs> Complaining about being single and not meeting anyone. You yep. know, all these things. Obviously, speed dating, it would be a case of if your ex was there or, you know, someone you didn't want to talk to, I'd hope that someone would just come up to me and say, like, do you know what? I really just don't want to talk to them. And I'm like, no worries. You know, just come up. I'm approachable. Can I I'll ask quickly, has that oh, happened? Oh, no. Okay. No, it hasn't. There have been exes there and I didn't even know about it until the end when they came up oh. to me and I'm like, yeah, that's really awkward and this is why. And I'm like, well, you handled it fine because I didn't even pick up on it. So, yeah, like, again, like I said, everyone's putting their best foot forward. But if that did happen and there was an ex there, like, so specifically for speed dating because that you're sitting opposite them, it would just be a case of, like, I could sit in, 
you can excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, go and get a drink, go get some more food, just completely remove yourself for that five minutes. No problems at all. Like no one's going to potentially the intention would be for no one to even notice. But like I said, I would just sit in and, and have that conversation instead. Um, that would be what would happen. At the other events, it's a case of there's so many other people that are attending that you don't even have to be anywhere near them. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess if you're still that awkward around running into your ex, should you be opening yourself up to dating? Yeah. Because eventually anyway, you're going to find out at some point, aren't they? Well, and, yeah, it's a case of, like, just do you. Don't even yeah. worry about them. Like, it, I hate that we let things like that control our actions yep. and potentially we miss out on some really cool stuff based yep. on the fear of that actually happening. Because the thing is, I guess you can sit with that and be like, well, what do I do if it does happen? Okay, that's not actually that bad. I can leave or yep. I can just ignore them. You know, there's there's lots of things that you can do yourself to not even have to worry about it. Yep. Um, and, then, yeah, and like I said, the possibilities of it actually happening are really quite low. Yeah. But I think that just all comes down to the stigma, doesn't it? Like well, I know when online dating started and it was a thing, people were too embarrassed to say that they met their partner on Tinder or whatever app it was. Yeah. It's the same with this really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and this is something that I am trying to break because it's like just be like I've personally chosen to be single for a really long yep. time. So, um, my, doors are, my doors are open to the right person coming in now yep. um, more than they've ever been. Like they, I've said that they were open but. It was like open this much. No one could actually fit through there. The light there was through. Like, I, mean, I was peeking out like a creeper, really. Like, you know, just like, what's out there? Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> now, we'll shut that again. Now it's a case of, yeah, no, but now it's a case of my door is wide open. And yep. if the right person comes in, I'm, I'm open to that. But I'm also, I'm not in a position where I'm actually looking either. I'm just allowing. Yep. Um, and I feel like with, with the singles events, obviously speed dating is your your intention is to look and their intention is to look as well. And that's great right because you're putting people with the same intentions within the same space. Yep. All of the other events are just low pressure. Just because yep. you're single doesn't mean you necessarily want to meet someone and that's okay, but you can still create friendships and form like expand those social networks with other people that are also single. Yes. Yep. That's, That's what like these the cocktail, are all about. The cocktail, the cocktail class I went to. Yeah. That was very yeah. much like that. And I love that it was such a mixed range of people. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I don't want to say his name, but there was a German I was speaking to in his 60s or 70s. Yeah. He was so yeah. beautiful. And I love sitting there yeah. and having that chat with him. And it's nice. And yeah. it's someone I probably wouldn't ever really speak to in everyday yeah. life. And it's not because I'm – snobby or anything it's just not someone that no. i come into contact with normally yeah yeah absolutely and that's and that's again what what it does that's why i don't so much put age groups on all the other events i'm a massive fan of whoever needs to come needs to come and that's what it is like have do you know what push yourself out of your comfort zone have a damn conversation with someone that's in their 70s you'll learn yep. something like i yep. did age care i freaking love like having conversations with people that have oh, lived their the lives i'm like yep. do you know what i'm 40 give me some pointers like you know what's something that you regret doing or yep. not regret doing um i have a, i have a friend of mine and he actually said i was having some decisive decision issues because that's how i roll i'm not very good at making decisions um and he said to me, he said, imagine that you're 80 years old and you're sitting in a rocking chair and that you've had the best life ever. And I'm like, okay, right, yep, doing that. And he goes, what would she say to you? Oh, oh. And it was so easy. What advice would your future going, self give you? Absolutely. Yep. I'm yep. like, oh, my God. Jesus, she was saying, don't you dare give up. You keep going. Like, you open that door, girlfriend. Away. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it was just like it was It was kind of one of my favourite moments where I'm like, oh, I love that. That that sat with me. I've told some people about that and they're like, oh, yeah, actually, this is cool. Um, but, yeah, again, it's like what would your future self say to you? I'm yeah. going to guarantee they're going to say, they're not going to say stay at home and don't yeah. need it. Get off your ass and go meet people. Ever. Yep. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Go and just try it. Like, like, so, yeah, so the negative stigma, that's where 
I am trying to break that. Again, based on just because you're single doesn't mean you're looking for a relationship, doesn't mean no. you're even open to a relationship. It means that you still want to do fun stuff. Why yep. can't you go and do fun stuff? Like why can't you go and have brunch in a yoga class with yep. other single people? Like why, why, what's wrong with that? Why can't you go to a single mingle night and meet other single people yep. and dance? What's wrong with that? Why can't you go barefoot bowling? on a Sunday afternoon just to do exactly. something different. Exactly, and nothing I, frustrates me more than when you see all those memes, why are they single or she's pretty or she's rich or she's why is she single or, or some stupid memes like that, that that have that kind of content. It's just like why is that even a question? Why, why is that even a question? Yeah, because she wants to be. I think yeah. there's, there's, a, there's some stuff that I had to work through myself when it was a case of like, well, there must be something wrong with her if she's still single. And it's like, do you know what? I'll actually own the fact that there's a multitude of things wrong with me. Absolutely. But guess what? For the right person, those things won't be wrong they at all. They love They'll that. Be all right. Yep. Yes. And so in getting, like, it's not about, it's not about loving yourself. Like, it's such a love yourself thing and then love will come in. It's just accepting. Do you know what? You need to accept who you are, accept those parts of you that you don't actually like because there are parts. We're human. We're not supposed to be perfect. There's no such We're thing as perfection. Be, exactly. It's just about being the best version of you. Yep, 100%. And that's good and bad and all the things in between. And taking time out from the dating world in being single is where you can learn that. Yes. Yep. Yes. And good podcasts. And, you know, <laughs> like just reading reading some books, listening, listen to all, just there's so many ways to grow yep. and heal. Yep. And it's just finding what works for you. Like, you know, for me it was med I found meditation. Yeah. That's that is amazing. Like I'm, I'm one of these people that I'll be like the calmest person meditating on the beach. Then I'll go to a nightclub and be the craziest person dancing yeah. in the middle of the dance floor. Sorry, so folks, I've seen her. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the joys, the joys of ADHD is being able to do whatever the heck I want. <laughs> Two extremes. But that's, that's where it's, yeah, it's like I said, the, the intention is to break this negative stigma yep. around actually being single and, and allowing people to, enjoy being single guess what yes. you don't have to ask anyone for permission to go 100 yep guess what you don't have to ask anyone permission to how much money you want to spend no, on yourself you don't have to explain you where you're going go. yeah you can you go anywhere what time you're you coming home anything. <laughs> yes there, and that's and that's do you know what it's it's i feel like when you really embrace that fact that's when the magic happens as in like and when i talk about magic i don't mean even meeting someone i mean meeting yourself i Meet mean yourself like, yep yes that's yep. where the magic is it's like it's in you and that's what we all i'm um, constantly focused on finding the positive in that situation and a lot of people aren't ready yet they're not there they're not seeing it but there is a positive yes absolutely i think um as far as not being there yet and I think a lot of people just don't know how to even get there. I don't no, even know if I'm there. I'm just, I'm just enjoying this ride that's life and just going, oh, we're doing this now. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> you know, and some days I'll be sobbing on my lounge because it's like, oh, I'm not my own again. I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. It's like, guess what, Lisa? You don't have a choice. Yep. You're doing this and you've done this and you're going to keep doing this because you're not a quitter. And that's like... Yeah, I guess that's the, the big things. Um, and also, like, not – and as far as, like, single parenting, it goes, I don't want my kids to, I, I guess, see, see me fail in a way. Like, I want them to, to see that they can, they can create awesome stuff with, from nothing. Yeah. Just by setting the intention, just by getting uncomfortable. Just by and doing being a single good. parent is not a reason to give up hope and think that you can't make something from your life. Okay, so let's talk about online dating. Now, everyone is hating on that at the moment. you got your catfishes, you got your scammers, you got your just people that put photos that are like 15, 20 years old. It's like, mate, can you show us a current photo? What are your like thoughts on online sunglasses. dating? Hey? Sorry. Oh, sunglasses, <laughs> yes. Yeah, sunglasses, just like random pics of not people. 
just yeah group photos their pets <laughs> camping <laughs> photos cat fishing like but you know what, guys out there, we're not just attacking you guys. We know there are girls out there that do it too. So it's for everyone. Oh, absolutely. Yep. The amount of filters that are out there. Yes. I remember like, when filters first came out, it was like all of a sudden everyone had dog yes. ears and a tongue. Like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had that tongue. Oh, I remember that. Skin, my skin looks so nice. Yeah. Because it's not real. It's fake. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Although, you know, I guess men can use the whole, well, women wear makeup thing. Yeah, we do because you like pretty things. Exactly. And if we didn't and we woke, we look like we did first thing in the morning every day or all day, <laughs> how do you think they would be? Would they like that? Probably not. Be like, oh, she's a bit boring. I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's, this, there's this theory about um, <laughs> men and women, how women are quite auditory and, you know, we listen to words. Yep. And men are visual. Men are visual characters and that's yeah. why, you know, I I wear basic makeup. But, yeah, yeah, again, but it's not, it just enhances what's already there. Yes. It's not like it's a, a filter Over where it's top. like, yeah. you know, you just smoothed out everything. It's, yeah, makeup, I think, yeah. Anyway, I don't even know how we got there. Where are we going? No. Online oh, dating. Online dating and filters. And yeah apps and everything else right. right well this is why i created connect social because not online dating isn't for everyone um i can only talk from my own online dating experiences and i found them soul crushing um i'm actually grateful that i'm banned from majority of them now anyway <laughs> um <laughs> due to trying to advertise connect social and i'm the competition so you know no more dating apps for lisa um I think that they're created with the purpose of people staying single. Yeah. Um, I have heard and that because, and I have heard, yeah. sorry to cut you off there, I have yeah. actually heard from multiple people that the apps will put people in front of you that are not what you're looking for to kind yeah. of keep you on there longer. Yeah. And, and the thing is it's a case of like... I, you know, back back in the old days. Wow. Anyway, back to in my days. To, <laughs> no, no, not even. I was like seventeen. I was married at twenty-one. Like I didn't even date. I just met one person and married them. Yeah. Um, right. Or seventeen. You know, that was yeah. That was what was done then. <laughs> now, I actually, I actually feel sorry for people, especially the younger generation that are growing up with this way of meeting people, because yeah. essentially. I think that we create, this is, again, I say we, but this is what I did when I was internet dating. I would create a false person or a false relationship even with someone I've never even met. You're like based off a couple of photos and some texting conversations, but really it was based off getting hit by dopamine constantly because of yeah. the messaging. Yep. Um, thinking that their pictures were really who they are and then going, oh, yeah, no, this is going to be great. And then when you met them and they didn't live up to your expectations or my expectations, yep. I should say, it was like a disappointing crash fall and boom, and here we go again. Well, next. Yeah. Well, well, always greener, though, isn't it? I'm going to go straight back home and jump on again. Yep. And because you're not even, and that's, I think that's where we lose that intention of actually getting to know people yeah. because we're like instant relationship or instant yeah. you know and it is that that thought process and i've only learned this recently based off both podcasts and everything else and it's like oh my god i've done that i did yeah. that i was doing that you know and yeah. now it's a case of like hmm i can't really do that anymore yeah. <laughs> which is you good. know what i struggle most with online dating and it's probably something i need to kind of work on in myself i don't like it when people just message and say hi or, hi, how are you? No, there's no, no effort. There's no conversation. No there's no interest. But then I've also got yeah. to be respectful of the fact that not everyone knows how to start a conversation. Yeah, and, look, but, they've been brave enough to say hi. So yes. I was I was always, and I still do, I'll meet what I'm given. If we're saying hi to each other, I'll say hi and I'll add a smiley face. That's the energy. <laughs> yep. Give a bit more hi with a wave. Yep. <laughs> if it doesn't go anywhere else, that's on you. Like. You know, but then again, I don't want to have meaningless conversations. No. If, we're, if we're saying hi to each other, yeah, organize a date, organize to meet up because yeah. I fully believe, which is why, again, Connect Social is what it is and it is such a success. Meeting in person, 
I'll know within a couple of minutes if I want to meet someone again or not. You know, I'll know if I want to invest into getting to know them more or them getting to know me more because then that way, like, otherwise it's a waste of time. Stop. I I saw this thing the other day and it really sat with me. It was like stop wasting time with someone else's soulmate. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. So it's not even about. Let them find their person. Yep. Let them find their person. And then allow the space for your person to find you by not just having someone or something for the sake of it. Yeah. Like, oh, I just need to feel loved. I just need someone to message me. No, you actually don't no. need someone messaging you. You no. need to find your, work. your life. Yes. But fill your life with so much stuff that someone's just going to add to it and not yes. take from it. This is like, oh my gosh, I hear these things and I'm like, that just resonates so much. It's like, if you're not adding to my life, what are you doing? I think you said that to me at the gym this morning. Yes, I think I did. I'm like, what did he bring to your life? It. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, oh my god, you weren't. You were adding anxiety, <laughs> insecurity, exactly. And uh, you know, me doubting my self worth. No, thank you. Yeah, I'm my my. I thank you for the reminder. But it is something that like it's. I'd heard it before as well, but you know when like you can they say. You need to hear something. So yes. this goes for like marketing, advertisement, business, personal yeah. life, whatever. Once it hit, you, you need to be hit at least three times with something yep. before it actually sinks in. Yep. Um, I need ten times. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I need to be slammed like literally across the face before I'll be like, oh, I get it. I'm listening. Yeah, oh. I hear you, universe. But- yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, with like I said, in meeting people in person at the start, you're already saving yourself time. Like I don't know about other people, but I'm a single mom. I run a business. I work three other jobs. Yep. <laughs> I'm busy. Yep. And so obviously dating hasn't been a priority for me. Yep. But I do believe that for the right person it would just it will work. work. Yep. But I don't have time to invest into people that, aren't for me and in internet dating and how that works is you're constantly investing parts of you into it you're constantly do you know what and that's this is where i was saying about the ego stroke like you can put some photos up and you know as a woman i know it's very different for men and i know you like you've got male listeners as well and it's so different to men their ex- internet dating experience thing where everyone's just not dating anymore because it, yep. it's, it's crushing. So you've got yep. men getting hit with scammers and women get them too. You've got women posting, I guess, like links, sending them to like OnlyFans and uh, okay. pay me here and yep. all of that sort of thing. And so it's it's just time waste, time waste, time waste. Yep. And then you've got women that are just getting low effort men as well. And it's not it's not having a go at anyone. Yep. It's just, it's just what the reality is. And then you this add to the mix dating. our, like, the real life of social media and everything else. People are just so used yeah. to doing everything on the computer. They don't want to yeah. kind of venture anywhere else. They want to just keep trying, but they're just going to yeah. sit back and keep complaining. See, for me, yes. I know when I meet someone online, I'm very quick in saying, hey, do you want to meet up? Because I'm yes. not wasting time. And But a lot of yeah. people don't like that. They get very intimidated by that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that just, do you know what that says? They're not ready. No, I was about to say exact same because thing. Because if your if your if your intention is to just be swiping, having meaningless conversations, do you know what? That's not for me happen. anyway. Huh. Yeah. So you know, enjoy. And I say meaningless conversations because I don't believe texting creates any form of meaning. No. It's not a great way to get to know people. You you can't pick up body language. You can't pick up a tone in text. You can't pick up. Like anything, like I'm, yep. I'm quite a like. You, you can see me; my hands are moving, yep. and I'm just, you know, my head wobbles, and I'm just <laughs> wanting to engage properly. Like, okay, Zoom meetings can work. Sure, you can see, you can see my essence. You can kind yep. of pick up a vibe. But in person, again, it's even like you can't see how someone moves yep. online. Yeah, you can't read their energy. You can't pick up who they are or their essence. But let's be honest, do we want to know how their day was every single day for like a whole week or two weeks in a row? 
that's you're if not we haven't happen. met like we've not we've not met yeah. all it's getting is it's literally you're just getting hit with a dopamine hit of oh yep. my phone went off ding yep. oh ding there it is again and ding, quite ding, often ding, it's going to be a one word it. response good thanks yeah oh, sorry that's two words how was yours essentially we're all junkies to dopamine it's like it's literally a drug now and yep. you know you can see it all the time like people will i guess in a way get rejected and they'll just be straight back onto the instead of sitting with the re rejection that wasn't even so really rejection happened? because it yep. just meant that person wasn't for you yep. oh yep. let's go with um freaking so glad i didn't invest any more of my time into that yes, like 100 percent. we just got to be able to yeah so this is and this is I'm not saying that this doesn't happen with in-person events. Yeah. That is dating in general. But you can have those authentic that, conversations at your events. Yeah. Yes. You're you're seeing who people are. Yeah. There's no filters. There's no texting. There's no trying to work out who someone is based off a filter or yeah. a phone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, or a filter, yeah. yeah, or like outdated photos or, you know, and because I think naturally we are designed to fill the gaps and internet yeah. dating leaves so many damn gaps. Yeah. It's like, you know, some people are even in a situation where they're like, is this person even going to show up? And so you're already starting the idea of it as, at a negative. Yeah. Like, you know, the thing is, with it with events the intention is to connect yeah people are coming with the intention to connect with others they're paying money to yep. come with the intention of connecting with others yeah and it's not like you know some i've had people say oh your events are so expensive and it's like actually it's not no they're not <laughs> they're really they're really not you'd pay more if you went on a date and essentially you're getting six to ten dates for speed dating you'd pay more if you went to the pub for your you'd probably pay more for your monthly online dating subscription i don't even know how much they cost because i don't pay for them but you probably would be paying more <laughs> I don't know but absolutely and do you know what you're getting to even if you're somebody that's super picky or super not not even picky picky is the wrong word just having someone that knows what they actually want yeah. Oh my gosh. Know what you want. And if it's not there, you're not going to feel rejected because it's not there. You know yes. that what you want is out there. You're yeah, patient so enough. You're patient enough to live your life and know that that person will come in when you and them are ready. Yep. That's and I guess you know the same could be said for internet dating. Sure. Absolutely. But how much more time are you wasting talking to people that aren't for you? That aren't on the same page. Yep. Like just yeah, but again, it's something that I'm probably super biased because I can't internet date. So therefore, <laughs> it's like it sucks. No one should do it. Like no. No, I'm, not, I'm not even saying that. I can, like I said, I'm only talking from my experience of when I was internet dating, and yeah, like I said, I found it soul crushing. I'm only on my phone for work stuff. Yeah. I don't want to be on it for like I. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, old nighttime social scrolls sure yep. i'm working most of the time but there's yes. still you know that mindless scrolling however i don't want to be texting random people all the time no on my phone no. i know when i was when i was internet dating and it was a case of like people would be like oh let's go to snapchat and i'm like why are we going go yes. to go yes yeah and they'd be like oh so we can share pics and i'm like do you know what? If I wanted to send pics to randoms, I'd at least get an OnlyFans account and get paid for it. Hey, yeah, hundred percent. I'm usually I'm usually blocked, but that's okay. See ya. <laughs> like, just yep. it. I feel like it's such a superficial way of meeting people. Yeah, and yeah, lots of time goes in with really low um, effort. Yep, and that's just it. It's just the world of convenience where it's just next, next, next. Yep. yep. It's like Uber, Uber Eats and Uber Dating, really. You can just yeah. order a date to your door, literally. Like, I think it's just not for me. It's a, Exactly. It's and about the whole convenience thing, I think I made a comment, and I think you may have seen it, about someone that got upset with me and quickly blocked me because I didn't message him back in a quick enough time frame. It's like, 
Why is yes. there an urgency on things? Why don't we just chill and go with the flow? You're not on a time frame to meet somebody. We just started talking, buddy. And, <laughs> and the funny thing is, it was that day I started talking to this guy yeah. and I was, I was doing stuff, might have been watching Bridgerton, I don't know, but um, because I didn't respond to him quick enough, I got blocked. It's like, I'm not offended by that. You're clearly not the right person, but yeah. Shows that he was just after an instant hit. I think it could have been Saturday night. He was just after an instant hit, someone to maybe come over and give him a bit of fun. Maybe I don't know, but yeah. And 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 the thing is, you won't know. All no. all that we all that we can do is, I guess, in order for things to make sense within our brains. I don't know if men do it as well, but I know, like for me, I'll create I'll create stories, and and it's becoming aware of that and be like. Obviously, you can't have that conversation because you're blocked, but it's a case of being able to go to someone and go, you know, the story I'm telling myself is X, Y, Z. And yep. then it allows the person to be able to move on from that, agree or, you know, tell you what is actually happening. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the story I'm telling myself, that's a Brene Brown thing. Um, the story I'm telling myself is, yeah, anyway, that's a pretty cool thing. But, yeah, no, internet dating, not internet dating, and actually getting to events and meeting people in person. So with your events, how do people find out about them? Uh, so my, oh, I'm massively social media um, orientated. So Instagram, Facebook. Facebook, there's like nearly 4,500 people on the page. Um, I advertise on like community pages within facebook as well um website i'm just setting up google so there'll be like hopefully some people will jump on <clears throat> leanne if you can jump on and leave me a good <laughs> that would be great um but yeah so that's they're the avenues that they're on i'm not a big fan of i've been asked in the past to like you know be sharing photos of the people that are attending and i'm yeah. actually not a fan of doing that because it creates an expectation of who and what will be there yeah, and I'm not, and that's a good that thing as well be because we'll some be. people are comfortable to go to these uh, events. But like we spoke about earlier, you got the ones that are scared in case they see someone they know or someone they know finds yeah. out. They don't want people seeing photos of them at these events. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not, and it's not even like a, it's a, it's a privacy thing. And like I said, you know, so sometimes there will be photos from a distance, or there'll be, you know, yes. the backs of people. Or I'll check with everyone that's there. If it's okay, if I take a quick shot because we're having a ball and this is fun yes. and I want people to see the fun. But then, yeah, sometimes you get people who are like, oh, no, no, no. And that's so okay and I respect that. Yep. But, again, like I said, like those so for speed dating events, I'll never take a photo because no. I don't want people to have an expectation of, like I said, who and what will be there um, because it can either deter or encourage and it's just like, then the next event, this person's going to come expecting to see someone that looks like that or doesn't look like that, or and it just creates this whole nightmare of no, we're not we're not doing expectations. Yeah, I've had people say, "Oh, can you <laughs> can you match me with people that I'm interested in?" Oh wow, no, go and enjoy internet dating for that one. <laughs> if you want to see the people that you're going on a date with, that's what internet dating is for. You're not a matchmaker, so to speak. You just organise. I'm not. Business. Yeah. I'm just organizing events with the intention of connection. Yep. That's that's what's created. If you want a specific type of person, then you need to do that yourself yep. by showing up at events where all types of people are coming. Putting yourself out there. Um, yeah, yeah. And then just that's, yeah. So what's the first, what's a bit of advice you can give to people that have been thinking about it? Like you said, you've known someone that's been wanting to go for years but have kept putting it yep. off. What advice do you have? I, just buy a ticket. One, once you once you buy a ticket, your commitment is harder to walk away from. Yep. Because you've you've paid money. Yep. Your time, like I, I, I personally look at money and go, oh, how much how much time did it take me to earn that? Like, so if I'm ever going for like a big ticket purchase or a small purchase, even it'll be like, how long did that take me away from the things that I'd rather be doing? Yep. So like hanging with my kids or going to the beach or just whatever the heck I want to do, lounging on my lounge, watching Netflix or reading a book. How much time did I have to work for yep. to earn? And so therefore there's a value in it because it's time. Yep. It's not, it's not a money value. 
it's a time money. It's a time value. And so oftentimes I'll be like, I actually really don't need that because <laughs> it's not worth it. Yep. This essentially the costs are worth it and then they're minimal costs. Like the things that I've got to cover is like venue hire, food, drinks, the entertainment, so like DJs. Um, sometimes there's security costs. There's there's lots of stuff. So there's like the admin costs as well. There's like of course, you've got to, so you're there's running a business, yeah. The reason, yeah, exactly. And so there are costs involved with having these events. Like the amount of people that have said, you know, oh, they're too expensive and it's like, well, you're not listening to me. Do you work for free? Yeah. And generally they're like, no, of course I don't work for free. Then why would events be for free? Yeah. There's it takes like, a lot of time to plan to put these events together and to market yeah. them and everything. Yeah. My joy comes from finding my purpose, which is helping other people yeah. and connecting them in that way. Again, my advice is, though, to people that are questioning whether they want to attend an event, my question is why not? Why, why would you not give it a try? Yeah. Do you know what I'm going to say? Know. A tip on that from someone that knows you and that's been to quite a few events, my tip would be that anyone that is thinking about it, do a social event before a speed dating event. Because I think for yeah. me it works so much easier because I knew you and that yes. yeah. made me more inclined to not want to pull out because I know you. Yeah. So if yeah. people Absolutely. don't know anyone, they don't have to face anything because, like, and if they worry, they can just block you and not have to deal with it. If you send yeah. them a message, say, what happened? Where are you? But if you go, I think going to a social event where yeah. there's no pressure, it's a lot more casual, it's fun, you're not kind yeah. of looking to get one-on-one with someone, I think that's a, a lot more of a relaxed atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it is something that I do say to people that do know me. They're like, I feel really nervous. I'm like, you already have an advantage because you already yes. know me. 100%. You know, you're, you're not coming into an event knowing no one. And the thing is, again, like I said, Pretty much everyone that's coming to events doesn't know anyone. Yeah. You know, they're coming on their own. They're they're doing it and they're it's like it's really cool. It's just yeah. Like I said, this this whole thing is really cool because it is helping people grow, it is helping people evolve, and it is helping people connect. Yep. And that's what we want. <clears throat> that's what do you see <laughs> what do you see for the future of Connect Social? Where do you see it going? So you did mention social events with just non-singles, like for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So there's been like I've been having like traffic light parties, which have been really fun for the last couple of months as well. So they'll be happening regularly again, like every month to six weeks, um, where they're open for everyone, just night out dancing. Uh, you get different coloured wristbands at the door. Again, there's there's so many cool like my. My thing is, so I'm looking at expanding to other areas as well. Yep. So not just being limited to the Central Coast of Newcastle and actually going to other areas, but there's a lot involved in that. And so I'm just sitting with it, hoping that, you know, someone will jump in and be like, hey, how do you want to do this? Let's do this. You know, I'll help you with it. And that would be cool. Or not. I'm happy if it just stays love where that. it's yep. well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I did change the name from um, Connect Social Central Coast to Connect Social AU. So that has been a huge, a huge thing to sit with myself because I'm like, oh. oh my god, this could go, this could go all over Australia. And again, it's a case of like, I believe in what I'm offering. Yeah. And I, you know, I, like I said, the story, the feedback is so positive. Like every now and then, you do get a negative feedback where you know I didn't enjoy the event, thought it was shit. And it's like, okay, what effort did you put in, though, within yep. that event? You know, generally the people that are saying it's shit are the ones that aren't participating yep. in the game. They're the ones that are, like, standing, you know, not interacting with anyone, yep. just seeing with sour faces and, 100%. you know, just, you've got to. Put yourself out there. I can only do so much as yep. the host or as, you know, as, as a business. I can create these really fun events. You have to create your own fun within that event. Yep. And so I just think, yeah, you've just got to get out of your comfort zones, push yourself through that little bit, and then look at instead of focusing on all the things that could go wrong, which are minimal, they, they really are like what you might run into an ex. Yep. Maybe, maybe you will. Chances are not, it's happened like Ooh. three times in two years. Yep. Um, you know, what's another negative? You have a shit time. Guess what? You could go to the pub and have a shit time there too. Exactly. And you have a shit time sitting at home. 
you could have a shit time sitting at home. <laughs> oh, oops, that's small. Oh, well, anyway, you could. The reality is, like, you can have a shit time anywhere. Yes. It's what you but make. Again, like, so you can focus on the, oh, it was a waste of money or it was a waste of my time. Okay, okay, you know, that's fine. They they may have been. Or you can look at it and go, I might not have met anyone, but far out, that was so fun. I'm really yeah. glad I got it my house yeah it was nice to talk to other people you know I enjoyed the food because a lot of my venues have the most amazing food and and that's what I was saying as well like the whole point of connect as well is to go and visit really cool venues locations and you know do fun activities and attractions and just have fun being single yeah. like yeah. take that take that pressure away and go, yeah, I'm going to a damn singles event and it's going to be a blast. Yep. I'm going to probably laugh because Lisa's funny. I'm <laughs> going to have a good time because, you know, there's other people that are the same as me. And who knows, I could actually meet a person that I want to marry. Not yep. that you know that straight away. But do you know what I mean? Like it, it, all, it all comes down to your it's the input, output. Yeah. And I think we all you're going to – sorry, you go. No, I was going to say, I think we all need to, need to also remember we're all adults here. We don't need to be spoon-fed. If we want to have a good day or good, a, a good, you know, take something positive from it, then you need to actually put the effort in. You can't just stand in the sidelines yeah. and go, this is shit. Yeah. But I generally do find in. the people. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, it is, it is the people that are just standing back eye-rolling. But it's quite funny because with the icebreaker games, they find other people that are standing back eye rolling. So it's doing exactly what oh, it's supposed to do, no. which is connecting people that are the same kind of people. So you've got your people that are really loud and out there and like loving it and going, yeah, this is great. And then you've got your people, I can't believe she's making me do this, but I'm going to do it because it's yep. kind of fun. I, I find it like quite it. fun. I they are. It's great to kind of break the ice. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Funny that, hey, I remember um, the first, like, three events that I had and I wasn't doing anything like this and, you know, I'm a bit of an energy person. I'll pick up people's vibes. And so I was picking up all of this nervous energy of these people coming in and then it's got um, – and then it was like, okay, I'm nervous as heck as well because I'm just new to this and I don't know what I'm doing and it's like, okay, I've got – one chance of making this work how can i make people feel better because i can't yeah. keep feeling this nervous all the time based on everyone else yeah. and so I, I came home and i was like right how to break ice and all of these really cool games came up and i'm like oh this is easy this is this is fun and so yeah, yeah now it's a part of this is what we'll do i think um, they also need to remember course. that if they're standing in the back corner rolling their eyes no one's going to want up and go up and talk to them it's like Just I always say to my daughter when she's at school and something may have happened, I said, you know what, if you're if someone's out there whinging and being nasty, no one's going to want to play with them. But if they're having fun and enjoying yeah. themselves, people are going to want to be around them. You're just it's naturally really attracted to people that are, yep. you know, uh, yeah. And, it, and it's not saying there's anything wrong. Like there's, there's people's personalities that are just naturally not that way inclined and that's okay. That's yep. so fine. And, uh, you know, I guess it's just in expanding your own personality in that way of, of again, getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I, I find myself sometimes like saying to my kids, just smile. Like it's not even just smile and you'll feel better. Like yeah. it's just that little, those little actions that can have a huge impact. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so it is, like I said, it is just just buy a ticket. That's the so, just folks. commit. Commit to it, you know, bring a single friend, get some single friends involved as well. Or if you haven't got any single friends, come and make some new ones, damn it. Come and make some friends. People. Yes, there's men, <laughs> And there's so just women, in saying like that, sorry, if I haven't already mentioned, I think Lisa has mentioned a few times. So Lisa's just based on the Central Coast, Newcastle, Hunter region, but there are other areas around that do do it, and Lisa is looking at expanding New South Wales, maybe <laughs> Australia-wide. Stay posted for that. Now we yeah. are going to wrap it up shortly. Is there anything you want to share before we wrap it up? Oh, I just really want to say that, you know, thanks for listening and that thanks for having me on the podcast. Um, also, like to all the listeners, just keep chipping away. As as those things come up, just keep chipping away. Um, it's not all bad. There's some really cool people out there and, yeah. 
Like I always I say, get com- oh, sorry. No, you go. No, no. I always yeah. say get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, because that's where the growth happens. Yep. I think too um, one of the biggest things that I'm sitting with at the moment is to be making sure that men and women are also hanging around and talking to other men and women that are healing yep. and that have good views of other people because you can get caught in the loops of other people's negativity and yep. it's like, you know, I I choose to associate myself with positive people not because I'm being fake and not because negative shit ha- doesn't happen to me. It does. I just am able to bounce back from it quicker and it rubs because off of you the choices that I make. Yep, and it rubs off on you. When people are around you and they're being negative and bitter, it puts you in that headspace. No one needs yep. that. Yeah, absolutely. And so it is, it's just being really mindful of who you're hanging around and, yeah, creating, again, networks of people that will help you naturally just by being who they are grow and evolve and, yeah. Just yeah. get to an event. Get, get to, to an, an event. event, guys. And like I said, if you are really nervous, jump on to Lisa's website or her social media. I'll put her details in the show notes below. But check out some of her events and try some of the social events before you check out the speed dating. If you don't know Lisa and you don't know anyone attending, or well, bring a friend with you. They don't have to be single. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Bring a friend. That's especially the amount, the amount of men that have said that, like for speed dating specifically, not the other events. They've like actually bought a friend and it was like, oh, that was so much easier because they were here. Yep. Because I didn't have to do this on my own. Yeah. Even though you are like, you know, you're having those one-on-one conversations for speed dating. The thing is when, when you can go, I know um, the other week there was this big crash meltdown with Facebook and my um, ticket links. And I felt so alone in that when I thought it was just me. But then when I found out it was the whole ticket link company, like the whole, the whole, it felt so much more inclusive because I wasn't alone. Yep. And yep. so for events, it's going, okay, I'm not the only person that feels this way. Yep. Everyone else in this space feels this way. We're all there. Okay. We're on the same I'm boat. okay. We're all oh, in and the something same else, boat. Exactly. And something else I want to throw out there, for, I know some people have mentioned this in the past, Lisa does put a list of questions on the table at speed dating. So if you get there and you're yeah. stuck in a moment and you don't know what to ask each other, she's got a list of, I don't know, there's a heap of questions on there. Oh, yeah. There's like 200 and something questions. They rarely get used, but they yes, are there. I've never used them. No, but some people aren't conversationalists. No, and exactly. Some people are. Yeah. Yep. And so if you're struggling, there are ideas there. There's little props. Yes. There's no right or wrong answers either. It's yes. not a test. It's no and that's marking. a great thing because I have heard people say, I don't I don't think I could go because I wouldn't know how, what to say or yeah. what to ask. Yeah. But you have got And five questions. minutes? Five minutes goes actually goes quick. really fast. Like, it does go very yeah. quick. But yeah. Thank you. All right, so guys, much. we're going to wrap this up. Thank you again, Lisa. Like I said, if you do want to hear or check out any of Lisa's events, check out the show notes. And I hope you all got something from this and I hope you enjoyed it. And, guys, get out of your comfort zone and check out one of these events. And uh, that's it from us today. And until next time, I'll be in your ears then. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep exploring your amazing Life After Plus One.